In my hand, I think I have what will be the most forgiving iron for the mid-handicapper to high-handicapper golfer this year. Take a look at them. Before I tell you what this iron is though, guys, I want you to hit the subscribe button for me down below. Loads of information to help your games and get better and enjoy it a little bit more. Let's find out what this little beauty is. So, for a long, long time, I would say, and probably a lot of people would agree with me, comment down below if you don't, the, the pink G range were the easiest to hit irons out on the market. Whether you're a mid-handicapper, high-handicapper, I've even seen some low-handicappers using them. They were just easy to use. Get away with toe strikes, heel strikes, low strikes. They just launched well and did what they said on the package. They were forgiving. But I think this iron here is changing it. And the iron in question that I think I will see in a lot more mid-to-high-handicappers bags moving forwards is this one, the Wilson Diner Power Iron. So when we're looking at that mid to high handicapper iron, I think sometimes what we get is a little bit of a stigma of the irons looking a little bit ugly, chunky, cumbersome, clumsy, were probably words that I would hear used when describing those irons. And they don't look sexy, but I think this Diner Power Iron, as we actually put it down behind the golf ball, as we see it in the golf bag as we're actually looking at it it looks like a you know it looks nice and it doesn't look like those things that i just described firstly when you actually see them in the bag now there's the flashes of the the diner power um, logo a bit of red there behind a little bit of a carbon plate the standard and the the logo of the wilson staff emblem that we've seen for many many a year now that looked really smart and even then just the chrome finish that the irons have they look like a smart iron. And even when you look into the CB versions of these, which are more aimed at the player, they just look like a slightly larger version of those. So they're not looking, you know, sort of ugly, where if you were to compare it maybe to a Ping G range, sometimes because of the back on them and the, the hollowness of the head, they look a little bit clumsy, look a little bit ugly to me, as where well. these, they look quite sleek and stealth. Now, obviously, these aren't aimed at me. They're aimed at the, the mid to high handicapper bracket. But even then, once I get them in hand and I, I put them behind the golf ball, I know that these irons are going to have a lot of offset. But again, from that chrome finish that they've got on them and the way that they sit behind the golf ball, they don't even look overly chunky. One of the things, and you don't really see it that much anymore, but you would tend to see maybe more in the longer irons would be that as you look down on the golf ball from above in your playing position, a lot of the higher handicapper irons, you see the back of the club almost, this part, the, the back edge almost sticking out because in these models, they're trying to get weight down low. They're trying to see that they're spreading the weight across the head. So then the launch is helped and the stability of the head is helped. And thus, you sort of lose that nice, look of maybe a blade where it's narrow, it's slim, it looks compact. You forgo that for the forgiveness aspect. But definitely in these ones, when you when you do put them down and even when you've got them in hand, the looks behind the golf ball, whether it is, you know, a pitching wedge, a seven iron, maybe a longer iron, the, the five iron, the six iron, you're not seeing that sort of chunky back end sticking out there, which for me, when you see that on a golf club, it is very off-putting. But definitely the looks wise, They've really, they've really done a great job of getting that to look, you know, just like a slightly larger version of the player's iron. Also, another thing that you would be looking for as you look down on these irons, do comment down below for me, is this going through the mindset of a mid to high handicapper. Is the top line of the golf club, so when you get it in behind the golf ball, this part of the golf club here, we see when we put that behind the golf ball, it looks, again, from the sort of chrome finish and then this brushed chrome that they've got where the grooves are and the top line. Looks quite sleek. It looks very thin, so it doesn't look that sort of clumsy, large effect behind the golf ball. You get it in, and as you're looking down on it now, it does look quite appealing. And like I say, the offset, I know it's there, but because of the way that the finish with the, the mirrored finish on them, reflecting back at one another, it doesn't seem that... It's there as much. I know that there's a lot of offset there, but it doesn't look like it, which is quite appealing, really, when you've got that in from there, knowing that I've got everything I need behind it. 
But I've also got the looks that are sort of making me think, well, that looks a bit ugly. I don't want to swing this thing. I'm actually, it's quite appealing on the eye when you get it even behind the golf ball. Take that. That's done nice there. Go in the hole. Oh, it's got miles. The next thing, which is really impressive, and I think, again, which will translate into why I will see these being quite popular, is the feel of the golf club. They aren't a forged head, they are a cast head. A strange thing behind here, which actually isn't generated for feel, it's actually generated for the forgiveness on the face. But they have what's called the power hole. Could have maybe come up with a better name. But it's these three lines behind the club head. But from a sort of standpoint of when I look at these, they look like urethane inserts that have gone in behind the club face. And like I say, they're designed for more of the variable face thickness to ensure fast ball speeds and forgiveness. But it sort of tricks my mind into thinking, well, they look soft. So now they're going to feel soft. And even when you're hitting shots, whether it be a full shot, whether it be a chip around the green with sort of the shorter clubs, maybe an eight iron, a nine iron, a wedge. They do feel quite nice off the club face and obviously depends on what golf ball you're going to be using that will impact that. But they've definitely got a good feel, I'd say, just from a cast club head than the shafts that they've got in them, the KBSs. They, they do feel like a good solid hit and there's that real bit of authority behind the strike, knowing that it's got a little bit of power in there and it's got a little bit of stability. It doesn't feel too harsh on the off-centered hits as well when you do get it a little bit more toed and a little bit more heel because of how the face is designed, which I'll get onto in a second. The actual strikes off the center, they don't feel as harsh and you're, you're not getting that horrible shaking, juddery, horrible feedback up the shaft that you would do maybe from a blade, which if you're that sort of player who would be using that, you might want that, but from a player who's not consistently finding the middle, maybe you get in the face a little bit all across it. You want to still feel that you've got something that feels quite relatively nice. And they've definitely done a, um, a good job of that in these Dyna Powers. The next thing which the Dyna Powers are featuring is the technology in the head. Now, I referred to the power hole a minute ago, change that name, which is again, helping with variable face thickness. So what they're trying to ensure in these Dyna Powers is that for any misstruck shot, whether it be toe, whether it be heel, whether it be low on the bottom, you're still getting good speed off the club face. So you're still going to get some distance. Also, what they've got and what they've done is study where the average golfer is hitting the golf ball. And 80% of the strikes are actually coming from the toe to the center. So with the variable face thickness, the way it's actually spread across the face, around that section from toe to heel, it's still producing really, really fast ball speed for that type of strike. So obviously if you are a mid handicap player or higher handicap player and you fall into that category, you want to know that you're still getting that good strike from the golf ball. Also what they've done as well is increase the moment of inertia throughout these irons. Just changed to a seven iron here, let's see how this goes. But the reason for that being is that they want to see less twist. Again, everything is aimed at that. I'm not striking it great all the time. When I do, I know what happens. But when I don't, I want to see that I still get a little bit of forgiveness there. I still get a bit of playability. Oh, that sounded powerful. And you get that good launch. And even like that one there, it's popping up in the air. It's getting me out. Gosh, it's long as well. It is a long golf club. That's what we want from a mid-handicapper. We want to have, you know, not loads of technology packed in there claiming that it's going to radically change how you play the game. We just want to know that there's a little bit in there that's going to help us on those bad shots, which they've done here. We want to know that it's going to launch up in the air. We've got the weight around the heel, the toe, the sole of the golf club, the bottom of it further back. That's going to aid in that stability and that launch. We've got that. And they're packing quite a punch as well when it comes to the actual flight of the golf ball. With this variable face thickness, it is seeing that it does deliver, like I say, a slightly faster ball speed on those off-centered strikes. I'm just gonna, another one off here. Like I said earlier, that sound, it sounds solid. It sounds aggressive. That was a toe strike I've just had. And like I say, they're not made for me, but seeing that it's up in stat 170 category for a seven iron that swung a little bit slower, that's still getting out there. That is what I want definitely from something like these. And I've taken these out on the golf course as well. And I've hit some shots out there and even from what I see in the sim when I'm hitting balls and I'm getting good distances, 
What's noticeable, I think, for me out on the golf course is that they launch, they just get up in the air, these sort of things. And from being a golf coach and seeing a lot of my students being in that mid to high handicapper, I always thought that that was one thing that when you gave that to a player, when you saw them hitting that good shot with a, a nice strike and it was soaring up into the air and getting some distance, that was a real sort of winning moment for that player. These are definitely doing that, that launch is up there, partly due to the club head design, also the shaft options that you can get will aid that as well, being a steel or a graphite availability and different weights in those to see if you are swinging it a little bit slower, you could get a little bit of a help there, but definitely out on the course, that was one thing that really, yes, the feel was there, and I was getting a distance that I would expect, but the ease of actually just getting the golf ball up into the air, whether it be a pitching wedge, a seven iron, a five iron, it was quite easy to, to make that happen, which is, like I say for me, where the mid handicapper would probably cherish that quite a lot. I think the big thing that we have to talk about, which is, I think, where Wilson probably come up trumps in this category, Maybe because they're a little bit of an unappreciated and recognised brands. Oh man, they have one of the most majors ever in history. Falling a little bit out of favour in terms of the big boys when we think of the Taylor-Aids, Callaways, Titleist, Pings. You'd probably put Wilson maybe in a rung underneath those. But when they have to compete on price, they are straight to the top of the pile when we're talking about those other brands. Because if you looked at what a set of Ping G430s would cost you, for the same as these would in five to pitching wedge, you'd be paying out £840. As where, well, if you were to get these in a five to pitching wedge in the steel shaft, you would only be paying out £579, which is a massive saving. So much so that if you were thinking, well, I want these, I actually, I might need a fairway wood or a rescue wood. If you wanted a rescue wood, you've got your five iron, to pitch and wedge and you wanted to go and get a four hybrid to help you and you wanted to throw a die to power one of those in you could do that if you wanted to then think well actually i need something to put on the greens you could get one of the wilson staff infinite lines in your bag as well and still have money left over to buy a couple of dozen golf balls all for the price of one set of irons from one of the big manufacturers that's decent that is a big saving for an iron that is doing the same as what those others are doing I think the beauty with them as well, after we've thought about price, is that they are in a lot of retail stores as well. You can go to your big manufacturers over here and you can also get that custom fitting availability on them. So whether you are a steel, whether you are a graphite, whether you need a, a lighter shaft, whether you need a regular or whether you need a stiff shaft, you've got that availability. You've got options to change the grip as well. You've also got the options to bend the heads in terms of flat and upright that can be done also when you're ordering these clubs so you know knowing that and knowing that they're coming in cheaper as well and also they're a great looking golf club they feel good and they perform like they would why would you not try these irons for me it's it's almost a no-brainer it is a no-brainer i mean that was poorly struck and as you can see on the uh sim i've hardly left the middle of these the range here at this point, a lot of shots that are going straight, they're launching up, and even if we just throw a few numbers up there of the seven iron and the wedge that I've hit, they do it. They actually, you know, they perform. And for me, that is where you want the mid handicapper to be. They're probably looking for something that isn't as expensive because you may be just getting into the sport where you're thinking, well, I don't want to spend loads because I don't know if I'm actually that good to get enough spent on the irons that way. Maybe you don't want to spend loads because you don't think your game warrants spending that. I've heard that quite a few times. And something like this, a, a quality brand, a quality club, a quality price, they're doing it for me. So for me, the Wilson Diner Power Irons, definitely want to think that if you're in that bracket, the mid to high handicapper, you should be looking at something like this. They tick a lot of boxes, price, feel, look, performance. They get in those, so... If you are trying irons and you want to save a few pounds, maybe take a look at the Wilson Staff Diner Power. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed that video. As always, do remember to hit the subscribe button and see some of our other reviews just over here.